It's 2020, probably the worst year of your existence. That's no excuse for you to have bad guitar tone while you are stuck at home. So, I'm Steve Sterlacci, and this is five reasons that you should choose the Line 6 Helix in 2020. So, welcome to this video. Thanks for clicking on it, stopping in to see what this is all about. So if you're already a Helix user, I want you to scroll down to the comments and leave your top five reasons for sticking with the Helix still in 2020. For those of you that are new to this, that have maybe never played a Helix or anything before, wanted to give you my five reasons for choosing the Helix and still continuing to use it, even though it's about five years old or so at this point. Is it five or three? I'm not sure off the top of my head. It's still gonna be my main number one road and studio tool. I use it every single day of my life. I use it professionally. I use it for my YouTube videos. I use it for everything. When you're choosing your modeler, I assume that you're here because you're trying to decide between like Kemper, Axe FX, you know, Helix, uh, Headbrush, whatever other units are out there. And just let me tell you from a professional standpoint, they're all great units. They all have pluses, they all have minuses. Debating which one is better is complete nonsense in my opinion, and I don't entertain any arguments for or against the other. It's just ridiculous and nonsense. They all will sound great, and it's really about you. If you can dial in a good tone, it's gonna sound great. It's 100% user-based. Do what you need. Like, find what's best for you personally, not what other people are saying in forums. That's all I'm gonna say about that. Let's move on. So first, I wanted to talk about why I chose the Helix in the first place, just in general. Um, my first dive into modeling, you know, I used to be the tube amp snob, has to be tubes, has to be analog, has to be true bypass, all that nonsense. And I got so caught up in that and it was a pain in the butt dealing with all that stuff, but used to be my mentality. And then I went with Jessica Lynn, the country artist that I play for. She's also my wife. Long story short, you can see other videos on the channel of us doing, you know, doing our thing. She recorded a EP in Belgium with the top studio musicians in Europe. So the guitar player was the house guitar player for The Voice, like, I guess kind of like the Tim Pierce version, but in Europe. So I remember being so excited being on this trip because I was expecting the rig, you know, the super big rig that you see in like Premier Guitar with all the, you know, the, the switching mechanisms and all this stuff. And to my disappointment, the guy showed up with just an Axe FX and he said, this is what I use on 99% of my sessions, gigs and everything. So I don't touch tubes or anything anymore. And I was like, what? What do you mean? Huh? How? So that was a big letdown. That was also our first European tour year. So later that year, I was now thinking, why am I wasting my time with this stuff? If it's good enough for this guy and I heard what it's capable of in the studio, then I should be doing the same thing. So I did my research and I trusted a very good studio musician here in New York, Ron Zabraki, who introduced me to the Helix and sold me on it as the best thing that I needed for my uses. Enough blabbering, let's get into the reasons. First one is home recording. Is it first or five? Did I, is this a countdown? How do you do this? Is it five, four, three, two, one, or one, two, three, four, five? I don't know, whatever. I'm not doing it in any particular order. Maybe I am, but maybe I'm not. First reason. Home recording. If you're stuck at home and you have nothing better to do than play guitar all day, you don't want to be stuck with any crappy tone and be stuck, you know, keeping your tube amp on one and, you know, having to rearrange your pedals and change up all your settings, not being able to get to gig volume. So home recording has been like the best part of this because I use it for my YouTube videos. It's a recording interface. So I just plug a USB cable into my laptop and I go right into my DAW and that's it. I have great tones going in. I also monitor myself through it. So the Helix takes the workload off of the computer. It does all the processing and you're hearing the tone first as opposed to going directly into any type of interface like a Focusrite or Apollo or something because that's gonna have to process it, send it to the DAW and then send it back to you. With the Helix, the direct tone is right there. And you can also send two signals out, one totally dry signal where it's literally as if you plugged your guitar into, into the DAW with nothing on it, and then you can reamp that using something like Helix Native, or you can send back into the Helix and do it that way, and you have unlimited flexibility on the tones that you just recorded. Next up, we have the effects and the amp modeling. Obviously, I mean, if you're getting an amp modeler, shouldn't this be one of the number one priorities? Amazing stuff. I have never once been disappointed with my sound live or in the studio. It's super easy to dial this thing in. Once you get a hang of the workflow, it's a breeze. Everything is easy. 
Also with the amps and the effects and part of why the Helix is still good so many years later is that they keep updating it. So every few months we get an update that adds amps, adds effects and adds features that makes it more usable for whatever you may need. And that's become huge. They just released in 2.9 the command center which basically was a cheat code for the Helix and it was already a couple of years old at that point and that just totally blew my mind and blew the Helix open into a whole new world of possibilities and they're going to continue to do that. The next update that's due out is going to be 3.0. It's currently not out at filming right now, but that's going to add polyphonic pitch shifting. So a lot of people complain that the Helix can't polyphonic pitch shift. It should be here within a month is what I'm assuming. They said by, you know, probably by the fall, we'll have the polyphonic pitch shifting. So you're going to be able to drop tune and do all sorts of wacky stuff with your guitar that you may need that for. Third reason, or number three, or number, or three. Yeah, this is three either way, counting up or, yeah, counting up or down is, yeah. Live use, it's been an absolute godsend because I tour full time, well, I used to before 2020. So having a consistent sound is what's most important to me. If you've ever toured or you've ever been to Europe to play music, having to deal with backline situations or trusting people, with your sound or not knowing what you're walking into that day. It is such a stress and a headache. I used to do it and it used to bug me. I used to have to carry my heavy amps everywhere and I was really a stickler about what I was having and making sure that it was at the venue and it was just such a headache. Since using the Helix, it's like I literally show up, pop it on the floor, turn it on and I sound exactly the same every single night without fail. The only thing is like tweak it to a PA, which is really minimal. The only thing I really have to do is affect high cuts in my global settings, which is really easy to do. I have videos on that if you are interested in checking them out. Super easy to do, dialed in for any venue, and it's literally just plug and play. Insanely easy to do once you have it dialed in the right way. The next reason is that this thing is indestructible. Okay, maybe, maybe not exactly indestructible. This thing has been through some abuse with me. It's been three or four years of constant abuse being stepped on, thrown around, chucked in a van, falling out of the van, rolling around, just getting beat on. It doesn't have a single scratch or dent on it. Maybe a little bit of scuffing here and there just from so much use, but for being three or four years old, my personal one, I still use the same one that I got day one, never once had an issue. The thing is rock solid and never given me a problem at all. So even in a softer padded gig bag, you know, not exactly a road durable hard case, it still holds up and has not had any issues as far as its um, durability goes. Last one I wanna talk about is the ability to play extra instruments through it. This is what takes the Helix to a different level. So there's all different options right now, like the Pod Go and the HX Stomp. Smaller units, less expensive units, very powerful in their own right. I have videos on them as well, if you guys wanna check them out. Something that always will set the Helix apart for me and something that'll keep it on the road with me for the longest time is that you could do extra instruments into it. You could do a guitar, you could do a Variax, you could do acoustic guitar, you could do vocals, you could do different electric guitars. You really have no limitations to what you plug into this thing and it'll sound great with everything. If it's got a little preamp on it, it can control that. You have EQs, everything can be just controlled through this. Me personally, when we're on the road, like I said, I tour with my wife, who's also the country artist I play for. I control all of her electric guitar tones via snapshots. And if you don't know what snapshots are, they're essentially presets within a given rig. So if you build one preset rig, you can have different preset sounds within that rig. So that's Snapshot 101, very brief explanation of what it is. So she's out there doing her thing, you know, singing and not having to worry about looking down and tap dancing on the floor, stepping on pedals, turning things on and off. I've got it all covered from my snapshots. I control my solo boost, her solo boost, clean, dirty tones, all independent of each other. So they're on completely separate paths in the Helix. So they're completely separate signal chains. They get a separate input, a separate output to the front of house, and there is no like crossing. So nothing I do to my sound will affect hers unless I want it to do it. It's pretty cool. You can also integrate it with your existing rig. If you have a couple of pedals that you're really, really obsessed with that you want in there no matter what, it's got effects loops on the back that you could just pop your pedals in, drop it anywhere in place and call it a day. You could have, just keep it on the whole time and then you can control it with the Helix. It's literally unlimited. If you have anything, a vocal processor that you wanna throw in here and send one line to front of house, you can do that. Something I really wanna experiment with and let me know if you're interested in a video on this is acoustic guitar where I have 
the, X, the, the quarter inch plug going into the Helix with some EQ on it and then a separate path with a microphone micro, micing the body up properly and blending the two of those to go to front of house. So for acoustic, it's like, you could do anything you want with it. Same thing with vocals. If you want to sing through it, it's got great effects and it's got a great vocal preamp. It sounds awesome. So all of this, and I haven't even touched on MIDI capabilities. I'm totally not a MIDI master whatsoever. I personally don't do any MIDI with the Helix because it already does everything that I need it to do. I have been guilty of trying to integrate other pieces of rig into this, like adding a couple of pedals, maybe a different compressor. And um, over time, I'm just like, man, it's not worth the headache. And that's what I keep coming back to, that same exact point, is that for me, there's nothing worth the headache anymore. I wanna show up, I wanna drop it, and I wanna play. I don't wanna focus on cables going bad, batteries dying, all this other crap happening. And I have that with the Helix. It's just so easy and so simple to not have to worry about that stuff. And now when I plug into a real amp and a real pedal board, I'm just like, I'm constantly tweaking now because I can't get I can't hone in exactly what I want like I can with the Helix, which is for me five years ago would have been totally foreign and like I would have probably kicked myself in the balls. But now that I'm with the Helix so much, I'm like, it's just so much easier. Once you get the workflow in, I could just get exactly what I want within two minutes. And like, I'm talking a full rig. With pedals, it's like, man, I gotta, I gotta just get the pot in the right spot. I gotta just make sure it's right. Gotta make sure the amp's at the sweet spot. Make sure the tubes are warmed up. Make sure the mic's in the right place on the speaker. Like all this crap that I used to obsess over and stress about is just a non-issue anymore. Showing up and plugging in, that's what it's about for me. Show up, plug in, sound great, and that's the end of the story. So thank you guys for taking the time to watch this video. If you guys, didn't realize what I did there. Did you catch my acronym? My five reasons? Home recording, effects, live use, indestructible, and extra instruments and gear. What's that spell? Okay, is that lame or not? Please let me know if that was lame because I'm fighting with my wife over this. She thought it was a great idea to acronym it. I thought it was lame. So here we are. Hopefully the wife is right. Happy wife, happy life. Thanks again for taking the time to watch the video. <laughs> Thanks again for taking the time to watch the video and uh, I'll see you in the next one.